Hello, everybody, and welcome to the GT vs. Super podcast. I'm your host, Anime Danime, and with me is... Bob. From Gig Boots. And we are on episode two of the GT vs. Super podcast. An amazing accomplishment. Episode one almost got a thousand views within a week. Well, I almost went and viewed it myself eight times so I didn't have to say the word almost. <laughs> I almost did that. <laughs> But it was an amazing reception. We're all glad that you want to join us on this journey to figure out which series is worse and which series is better. Okay. I was going to say, shouldn't it be which is better? That's kind of the same question. I guess. You still, you rank them. Mm -hmm. It's not like, we wouldn't phrase it, find out which one number two is. (laughs) We're here to talk about episode two of Super and episode two of GT. But we actually have some unsettled business from last episode we got notes from hail zeon oh jeez and i figured i would read he at very did, least did some of these yes maybe not all just some so you know to let's tie up some loose ends zeon notes what P- peel off says in the sub and the dub about the black star dragon balls is basically the same you know as the japanese okay. version so there's no weirdness about like this twice as strong bullshit is just completely made <laughs> up it's just that all of it's nonsense to begin with. Okay. It's just that the first episode's like, we need someone to unload this exposition. It might as well be Pilaf. And only Pilaf and maybe Mr. Popo know about this stuff. Man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He, I Wait, guess hey, he, we he, covered that last episode. He knew comedy. We covered, he com- we he covered just, that last episode. He, we yeah. covered that last episode. Sure. Episode two is a different game. Okay. All right. We move on. Uh, the now. series is set five years after the end of Zia, I presume. He's talking about, uh, he's talking about GT with that one because it is more than, it is less than five. Wait, no, I guess he is talking about Super. Oh, no. Yeah, no, this is about GT because five years that- after the end of Z, 15 years after Kid Boo Fight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously that could not tie into Super. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. So GT set after, uh, five years after the end of Z, 15 years after the Kid Boo Fight. At the end of Z, Vegeta says that the Saiyans stay in their fighting prime longer because they're evolved as a warrior race, and that's why Goku looks the same and everyone else looks older. There you go, Bob. Yeah, no, it's just the... <sighs> Starting in the place where everyone's immortal uh-huh. to, to show the age or the time jump is dumb. <laughs> is it... Or is it a shock when you see everyone else and you go, Whoa! How long has it been? It's like a Shyamalan twist. But it's not really, though, because the Pilaf gang was way older than you would expect. I was thrilled. I was (laughs) chilled. Okay, let's go. keep going. Okay. Dende used Kami's dragon design. This is the dumbest (laughs) shit. (laughs) Where do you even find this, Zeon? (laughs) In his fanfic. <laughs> right. He's gonna get pissed. No, he definitely did not make this shit up. That's the worst part. Here we go. Then they used Kami's dragon design for Shenlong because it would have taken him months to create one. <laughs> his, his, his Shenlong OC would have taken months, okay? Months. So he used Kami's design and mm-hmm. they wanted to collect the Dragon Balls before the Cell games. Remember? Yeah, that's an important thing. So that's, they, you know, that's like why he cribbed that fucking... incredibly trivial. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's why they cribbed that design from <laughs> from Kavi's deviant art. <laughs> Pan was four by the end of Z, so she is nine years old in GT. Noted. Okay. Oh, the and next... Bra is eight. The, did she look eight? She to did you? not look eight. She when, didn't look she eight. She was like, to me. like like twice as tall as Pan. That didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, Pan clearly has dwarfism or something. Yeah, she's she's got that. She's but she's only nine. She should be short. Well, yeah, but when you're nine and have dwarfism, you're short multiplied by short. You're short squared. The amount of knowledge that Kayo has, the amount of knowledge Kayo has is very inconsistent. Sometimes he knows all. Sometimes he can't tell if Goku is alive or dead. That's correct. <laughs> yes, I, King, even uh, King even Kai, for right? my limited yes. Okay. No, Kayo. Kayo-sama. Kayo-ken, okay. Kayo-sama's ka- Ken. Okay. <laughs> His name's Ken, he's violent. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna get racy. <laughs> this is... He's gonna have a heated Kayo moment. <laughs> the Dragon Balls turned to stone when Kami died, and again when Kami assimilated with Piccolo. It's never <laughs> stated how or if the Black Star of Dragon Balls were affected other than killing their creator makes them inert. But <laughs> nope, we're rolling on. We don't have time for you to react with words That's and thoughts. Insane. You just you take 
You take Xeon's words and you just it's clearly after you just, the simulation. You just absorb them, okay? Okay. Don't question anything All right. from here on out. I don't want to hear any questioning. But that's the whole point of this, isn't it? <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Super's place in the timeline is weird. The narrator implies it's been a few months since the defeat of Kid Boo, but it later becomes clear that it's set four years later, so Goten is actually 10 or 11 and Trunks is 11 or 12. That seems weird. That seems like, like inconsistent writing ideas that would definitely crop up in a 136 episode series. Right. Uh, yeah, I have to. I, I really want to see how that, they mess that up. Because they're, they're super. Because God knows it's a throwaway line. Yeah. Beers was asleep for 39 years, which we found out on today's episode. Right. So basically the entirety of Goku's life up until that point. That line in GT where Goku says he hasn't been that worn out since the fight with Frieza. You know, the one where he tosses right. every yeah, villain under the bus. bus. <laughs> Fuck y'all, you ain't shit. I miss my ex. <laughs> Uh, when talking about training with Oob is a dub only line. In the sub, he's just talking about finishing his training with Oob. Okay. And wanting to go all out against him. <laughs> then he starts responding to maybe specific comments we made. Yes. Uh, not just questions we posed. He goes, fact, my entire life is a waste. Okay. Bob, you can't... Wait, why, why did you question everything up until that point? <laughs> I'm noticing you didn't put a fight up there at all. You were even like, he's he's the one who's made himself this DBZ lore master. I don't know what else to I say. I think he made himself that. I didn't choose to have like crazy pixel peeping OCD. Whoops. You should rough up that mic, Bob. Yeah, that's my, my job here. He looked at you wrong. <laughs> uh, Bob, you can't change Super Saiyan God and make it worse is the thing you said. Yes, that's that true. Is it. You can't change Super Saiyan God and make it worse is something you said. And Xeon wants you to remember those words. Yeah, no. That, I still stand by that. Yep. You, it's already the dumbest thing imaginable. It, you can actually make it slightly dumber is all I'm going to say. No. We'll get there. No, no impossible. Impossible. Okay. <laughs> Man, you do. At, at you that, have no at faith that point, in Toei Riders. So at that point, it just becomes pure parody. <laughs> nope. Nope. Because there's a little bit further you can take the tile down, dial down, uh -huh. right? Before it just becomes amazingly dumb. <laughs> I don't it's think... in that Uncanny Valley still of like, you guys are. Why did you do. <laughs> but in any case. Okay, Bob, a new set of Dragon Balls are dumb, but a human scientist making cyborgs that are stronger than Frieza and Saiyans being able to ascend to literal godhood is okay. Got it. Okay. okay. I, I really do want to address this one. That's insane. Bob's, this Bob's is... gonna address you addressing Bob. Yes. Prepare to get dressed, motherfucker. <laughs> that, Jiro and everything he does is happening in complete secrecy, far away from the eyes of anyone we know in Z. Yes. Anyone. Correct. The Black Star Dragon Balls are on Kami's patio. Very different situation. <laughs> we go off to Kami's house like constantly. So what constantly. you're saying? What you're saying? Uh huh. Okay. You're willing to have androids made by Jiro in secrecy that are more powerful than Saiyans and Frieza. Yes. That you can. I can. So so in exchange for that, right? Uh -huh. I'm gonna change the part that you keep underscoring as the part that's dumb about this. Kami now has three sets of Dragon Balls, but they're hid well. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that would be better. Like, like, first off, the, the balls should be inert. These they just are, should be. These are the Mountain Dew Code Red Balls. <laughs> <laughs> they should not work. Because Kami is assimilated slash dead. Okay. So they shouldn't even work. I mean, he lives on in Piccolo. But after the assimilation, they apparently went in her. I don't know. Like, like I'm not pretending what he said to be here. <laughs> okay, Zeon, I guess you're just gonna have to rebut his rebuttal. And get some butt up in here. <sighs> Another comment to you, Bob. I noticed you. He apparently, takes, he right, takes I know. some real problems with a lot of things you it's said. It's almost like I'm attacking GT or something. <laughs> Nah, that can't be it. It's fine that the Pilaf gang just show up after years and years of non-uses. Something you said. Uh -huh. And then he goes, I want you to remember those sarcastic words later. Oh yeah, no, I, I know that they have to show up in, in uh, Z, but... Or not Z. They have to show up in Super. <laughs> Actually, they don't have to show up in Z, <laughs> right? it turns out. But, it, you know, they don't show up in our grannies. <laughs> Being old is dumb, is what Bob's saying. Old people, stop doing shit. Stay indoors. <laughs> no. <laughs> Freaking, that, when that doesn't match, like, anyone else's ages. What are you talking about? It matches other people's ages. Like, they go back and they show Chi-Chi and Videl, and they don't look 
ridiculously I mean, older. No, but Chi Chi was a child when those. And Bulma wasn't. Bulma was a teenager though. Those those people in the Red Ribbon Army were like adults. Maybe. I don't know. Bob's like, I don't know, fucking anime. They're all like eight, and you're all pedophiles for being turned on. <laughs> Bob goes full cave. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is gamers, right? <laughs> Toriyama had no part in the writing of GT, though he did provide designs for all the returning characters, one new character, and the planets. Ooh. Exciting. Exciting. I mean, that's what people like about Super, that Toriyama's doing the designs. Right? That's why people are like, this is authentic, unlike GT. Isn't he supposed to have some sort of uh, writing yeah, thing writing where he's thing. like, here's my dumbass idea, make it work? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he did provide the design. That's... Man, knowing, knowing like, the new designs for Vegeta and stuff, jeez. I, I like the mustache. It's hilarious. <laughs> mustache Vegeta's is... personality would grow that mustache. <laughs> I've met Vegeta. Fair. He lives in the South. But it, it's still really lame looking. <laughs> That's kind of the point, right? And then they're going with the the, sh the weird shorter haircut. The awesome makes him look lame. I don't know. Less talking. memorable. Less memorable. <laughs> okay, it's fine. fine. It's, it's plenty memorable. It's just awful. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes, Bob, people make awful decisions with their hair uh -huh. because they're dads. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, they have to engage dad mode. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so is that all of it? No, there's one last note. He said, P.S. I enjoyed this, except for that Bob guy. Fuck him. Oh, jeez. So, this guy's meanie. <laughs> I don't know. He, he can't be too mean. He knows way too much about Dragon Ball, and as such is a valuable asset to this podcast since we're watching it on his discs. <laughs> okay, Bob. Okay. Now that we've spent... Okay, I can't quite read that from here, but I assume it's three years. Reading Zeon's comments... Let's let's talk about what we watched today. We watched episode two of GT mm -hmm. and episode two of Super. Right, and we took notes. We did. We we took some notes this time. I was eating Whataburger during part of it, so maybe I didn't take as many notes as I should have on GT. There's so many things to cherish. Oh yeah, so so great. Let's let's talk about what happened in that episode of GT real quick. Okay. Okay. And once again, don't don't question anything until I'm cool. <laughs> not, not until it's totally over, even though it seems like maybe not it's until just... I stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> you can just push that off a bit. <laughs> that would really don't even, that don't do even... me a solid. So no criticizing it. Okay. Not not at all. I you know I think what really bugs me out the peel off thing is it that sounds it, like you're criticizing. <laughs> this, this isn't even to do with this episode yet, but which is also <laughs> against the rules. Otherwise, each episode is gonna get longer and longer. It's true, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's not just that they're they're grand grannies and what whatever. If mm -hmm. we give out the age thing, mm -hmm. it's just they, mm -hmm. it's implied that they're still mm -hmm. doing this. Like they, it's been thirty years and they're still just trying desperately to hunt things out like this. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's really weird. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's terrible that old people have dreams too. They should have given up on those long ago. <laughs> Your YouTube channel's never gonna work off work out peel off, so just fuck off. Okay. <laughs> now then. <laughs> uh so what happens in this episode is a direct follow-up to the last episode. Yes. Pan is there when they're talking about how Goku's gonna go into space, and they're like, hey Goku, you can you can go with your son, remember? And then Go Gohan's like, Yeah, I'll go with you, and then Chi Chi's like, oh, it'll be a great father son trip. And Pan's like, I can go too. And they're like, no, you can't. And then she's like, but, but I'm brave. And they're like, you sleep with a night nightlight on, Pan. You can't go. That's dumb. There are a bunch of scary things in space. Except for Chi Chi goes, there's a bunch of scary things in space. Because apparently just talking to a nine year old straight yeah. is it's just it's too much. It's too much. It's too much to ask for Chi Chi, who's a condescending bitch. Um,. <laughs> Bob's like, no criticisms on that. That seems fair. <laughs> We've seen so little of her parenting, I, I can only assume. <laughs> what? Do you not remember Z? Oh, yeah, no. She's just like, I don't oh, fucking yeah. care if the planet's gonna blow yeah, up. No, you it, fucking study math, it, motherfucker. It, basically, every scene we've seen of Chi-Chi is pretty bad. <laughs> she was okay when she was like, what, seven? I don't right. even know how so, old she was. Whatever. 13? I don't know what they were going for there. I don't know. 
Maybe that was she says it. She says it. Maybe, but it's been forever, and I didn't really see. You know, they didn't bring it up in Dragon Power, so I I don't really, (laughs) I don't really know. So in any case, Pan spends the uh, whole episode pretty pissed about not being able to go into space, and that she's an adult. Yeah, she's she's mature Uh for her age, especially. Yes. So she's like pouting, and she kicks the inside of the ship out of anger, and then one of the boosters comes loose. And it's like and insanely sorta, loud, and it bre- breaks a good part of the ship, and nobody yep, notices. Yep, yep. Even though it was like feet feet away from Videl and yeah. Vivolva, uh-huh. they didn't they didn't care. No, they, they like, didn't care. They just it's just casual. This happens. The sayings. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Look, all I'm saying is, <laughs> I've been around Filipina ladies talking on a cell phone. <laughs> if one of them just started screaming and exploded. <laughs> That wouldn't sound any different from how they sound shouting into the damn thing anyways. <laughs> you saying that this nine year old girl is just typically on No, that every saying. It's a cultural thing. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's, it's, it's in the same blood to just punch shit and stop and be loud. <laughs> have you seen Vegeta? She doesn't have any of that Vegeta blood, though. No, she doesn't. But it's very sane. I guess. Very sane. Very sane. Dan with his racism against Saiyans. Seriously, Dan, you need to Um, tone it back. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm just saying what everyone's thinking. Now then, so she hides herself away inside of the ship after covering up a panel on the wall. But meanwhile, while that's going on, Goku leaves the uh, capsule core... Oh no, she you, she goes off and wanders around. And does her own. I was little just power summarizing YouTube. the events of okay. her story. If you want to cover the part where she eats with Hercule, yeah, they, and they, she gets a coffee, and she's like, "Oh, the coffee's black," because <laughs> I'm a mature lady. And then she drinks it, and she's like, "Woo!" And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of cute." And then Hercule's eating a giant fucking Sunday because he's Hercule with a billion. Th- yeah, yeah, because no, he's I a think, giant baby. I I think the Hercule stuff was pretty solid. Yeah, it was, like, it was they, fun. They they, they did. They did well with that. That's why it was good. Yeah. I was just trying to brutally summarize the episode, so we eventually get through the summary part. Okay. And get into specific notes we may or may not have about moments. Okay. In any case, parallel to these events, Goku leaves Capsule Core, you know, the richest corporation on the planet, mm-hmm. but can't afford proper kerning in the sign on this front door. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Graphic designers. Pfft. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> That's wasted money. <laughs> Just free real estate. <laughs> so they don't care. I mean, they have. Uh, they That's have, world building. <laughs> they have like apparently the best CEO in the world or something. Sure. So it, it works I don't out know, probably. So Goku leaves there, and uh, some people, unbeknownst to uh, the residents of the Capsule Core house. Which is a house and capsule core, a thing I still can't get over somehow. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm, it's big. I guess they could live there. I, I I feel like it's their house, and then they show like. You want me to put a giant fucking gigaboot sign in front of your house? Not really. Do you not see this guy? No, no. Here, I'm or? saying that, that there's also the place that Trunks goes and works at, and that seems to be where the actual business is held. So I, I don't know. They just put giant capital cord logos all over their own home. I don't get it. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. That's like you're asking for trouble. It's a good thing at least two of the residents of your house could probably fly and kick ass. <laughs> so, in any case, Goku leaves. Some people have been sitting outside who are, who are going to kidnap Bra or Bull. I don't know why she's called that in this. That's very confusing. Yeah. That's weird. I don't know. It's Bulma's daughter. And they were like, Bull. But her name's supposed to be Bra, Buddha. Right. Yes. I'm still just like, is this really happening? Like, I'm hoping I mean, I'm this, saying... This dub is just so old, I guess, that they didn't figure it out yet. <sighs> or they were... They or ever. It. Or they censored it. They're like, we can't have him say Bra all the time. Which just seems yes, insane. That's, that's, that that's seems definitely crazy. what happened. I just, I, I don't think that there's a chance that them saying bra is what set it off. But in any case, <laughs> and then Goku's kidnapped by them because they couldn't. They tried to kidnap Pan, and Pan flew away, and without like going, the fuck do you mean she flew away? Oh yeah, no, it's just because they they make a gag of he's like she flew away, and the other guy's like you you have a dumb brain. 
<laughs> That's the end of that, right? They dismiss They're it. like, it's well, like, clearly that didn't happen. This Goku kid was clearly hanging out with the Bulma family. We're just gonna fucking, we're gonna steal this Goku kid and then try to ransom him. So, the second tangent for this episode is that these criminals are kidnapping Goku, taking him to, like, theme parks and a, a restaurant, and just calling them and trying to get ransom money the whole time. First time, Bulma's like, no, you, you've got the wrong number. What do you mean you have my grandson? That's not... Oh, you have Goku. Yeah, good luck with him. Yeah. And then the second time they get Vegeta, Vegeta's like, do what you want, <laughs> hangs up. And they're just like, what the fuck is going on? And then they're, they're just like, Jesus Christ, this kid costs so much to feed once. The thought of feeding him again, we're going to go completely bankrupt. We need to find a phone to try and ransom him one more time. And then Goku's like, is this a fun game? I can find a phone. Ha 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 ha. And then flies out of the car, picks up a telephone booth and smashes it on the road next to them. <laughs> Because that's funny. Because that's guess. funny as shit. <laughs> Look, you shrunk him down. You made him as dumb as he was when he was a kid, which is impressively dumb even compared to modern Goku. I feel like it's probably the same level of dumb <laughs> as he is, was is, when he was a yeah. kid. No, is is he was an adult? No, no. Old Dragon Ball. Let me tell you, Goku does some things where it's just like, "Are you a chick? Let me rape you." <laughs> yeah, no, you're it's right. the only way I can know. <laughs> he, he does do some really questionable things. Uh, problematics, the word. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's um, the word I would. Uh, I believe the anime connoisseur would use <laughs> to describe Goku's actions. Hashtag Bulma two. But but yeah, so then they freak out and they drive off, and it's amazing because. He smashes the phone booth, right? right? Right right next to their car. And they're like, holy Christ, because they were already freaking out that he flew away. And then and then when they see he did that, they drive away. And they're like, man, we should get real jobs. And I was like, man, that was a great character arc that happened in two seconds there. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was I, great. It made me laugh. <laughs> it did what it was. It wasn't trying to do some deep storytelling. It was trying to be funny. And it made me laugh. So I guess it was effective. What a great show GT is. Uh-huh. I think so. And uh, I guess, like, the, the third tangent is we follow Trunks in his day-to-day -day business of, like, running the corporation and just the stresses of that and how he... Climbs out a window in the middle of being briefed on his day's events and flies away. And this apparently... changes clothes in the clouds. Right. Like yes. it's fucking some Peter Pan shit. I don't. I guess. Yeah. That's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. And then he just tosses his business outfit into the ocean. Yeah. And then flies away. And this happens like twice in this one episode. Well, it, it, it definitely happens once, and he almost gets away with it a second time, and then Vegeta's just floating outside with his fucking mustache, and he's like, Son, look at my mustache! And then in the next scene, like, Trunks is in his business suit at the beginning of that scene. Yes. In the next scene, he's in the other suit. Well, he but still changed his outfit in the clouds. He took it while, while Vegeta held him. <laughs> yeah, and the whole reason Vegeta came for him was to force him and uh, Goten to go into space with Goku to help find... The Dragon Balls. So the Black Star Dragon Balls. <laughs> why does it got to be Black Star? I don't know. Why does it have to be Black Star Dragon Balls? Because it's really smart. Why are you <laughs> fucking quit? Look, I don't sit there and be like, "What's Bayonetta's butt got to be so big?" <laughs> <laughs> so you know that'd be a pretty good live stream. <laughs> Overly concerned feminist watches Bob Lutz play Bayonetta. Bob tries to explain while not dying. <laughs> It's just a witch butt. It's huge. That's how it is. I don't <laughs> That's know where what the power you. resides. Look, it's explained by the lore. Like, just read this. Hands art book. <laughs> um, and so that's 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 really the events of the whole episode. I I think I covered everything. The, at the end of the episode, they do you know, yes. like in zany events. Okay, so Pan's <laughs> in the the cockpit, the main steering room, clearly. Trunks and Goku come in there, and they're like, Pan, what are you doing in here? And she's like, oh, you know, we're going to go on our adventure. It's going to be great. And they're like, no, you can't be fooling around in here. And she's like, okay, let's not fool around. Here we go. And then she slammed the launch button, and they took off. And everyone's like, oh, my God. We stood right next to a spaceship taking off and didn't get incinerated. Isn't that great? And then uh, tiny pieces of it, of the ship, 
falls off as it's flying into space. And Bulma's like, oh, that's... We didn't really design those to, like, molt. <laughs> maybe I, uh, I'm bad at this. Maybe, maybe I should uh, child-proof my spaceships. <laughs> Saying child-proof my spaceships. So, Impossible. I, I, I have some notes, so if we could just read these and then move on to talking about Super, that I, I, I feel like that. that would yeah, let me go. Uh, so the episode is really super goofy. There, like, keep in mind, episode one was the exposition dump and everything else they had going on. Yeah, no, it was basically just all lore dump. Like there was no time for. Let anything me catch else. you up to speed in the in in a, a brutal way. Yes. Um, I feel like this episode did a much better job of being lighthearted and sort of reflecting the intro and being like, we're going to do funny stuff. You know, it's not, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be funny. It's not going to be a bunch of fucking lore shitting on your face at all times. <laughs> um, and I'm kind of, su- I'm really kind of surprised that it made me laugh. I didn't expect to legitimately enjoy GT. <laughs> right. Um, but it's happening. It's begun to happen. And I'm worried that what if I'm being damaged, and it's not improving. I'm just giving up and giving in to the darkness. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, I have another note here. I went over it once already, but I'm going to go over it again because it's worth repeating. Capsule Core is the richest company in the world, but can't afford proper kerning on the side on the front door Yeah, no. of their residential house. No, why would they? <laughs> because it's really unprofessional to not have professional things. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, well. <laughs> It worked out for them this far. They've been like that since... I mean, they're the richest company in the world. Right. Clearly. So they can't be doing anything wrong. Bob, you have um, what I presume is some hieroglyphics inscribed on this notepad. Because those aren't words. <laughs> what What did you want to talk about? Is it nothing? <laughs> Goku, like, weirdly, doesn't want to go save the Earth. Like, yeah, no, they, Goku's they're a like, real piece of shit in this episode. Right, the, he's, he's like, oh, man, do we really have to go into space? And they're like, Goku, the Earth is going to blow up. And Chi-Chi goes, and I'm not exaggerating. And we just did the back porch. <laughs> and I don't want to lose that. Yeah. Yeah. Because Chi-Chi isn't even a fucking human by this point. <laughs> right? She's just, like, stereotypical, like... I would say she's gone beyond the stereotype. Yeah. She stereotype god stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that part really irked me. Like, that was just insane. And I guess it goes harking more back to, yeah, his his brain's gone back to child form, too. Yeah. And it's it's weird. Yeah. I mean, yep. That just seems to be what it is. Like, the, the, I feel like they'll just keep doing that. Like, they'll keep leading Writing on him and, as though yeah. he hasn't been an adult and mentally he's a child again. Right. And yeah. that's frustrating. If that's what they're going with, with the age reversion thing, you know? Yeah, no, I get that. It's just, yeah. it, 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 it always, I feel like it's going to be a constant crutch of like, well, he could do something smart and stop all of this, but it's just going to be done. Oh, man, dumb. I hate a uh, series where the protagonist is inept or stupid. What I'm trying to say is I've never enjoyed fiction. <laughs> <laughs> I've never joined a single anime in my life. <laughs> But unreasonably, like, this is new character. Just treat it like it's Goku just, as this, a kid again. Just, this isn't Goku anymore. Okay. It's, it's Goku as a kid again. It's Goku as a kid again. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's, uh, they took kid, kid Goku uh-huh. of episode two of Dragon Ball, threw him into GT and, be, and been like, you kind of just doomed the earth to get blown up. You got to go to space. And he's like, do I really? Because he's just, he doesn't put two and two together of like, him and Chi Chi are now at the same mental level, is what I'm saying, right? Right. Neither of them are extending it to the point of right. Oh, we'll die. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it doesn't even click. Okay. How does how does the Earth? <laughs> oh man, how is the news relevant to me? Hashtag. <laughs> how does the Earth blowing up affect my back porch? <laughs> yes. We didn't get much Goten. Like he was introduced in the very end. Like. Like well, back he half shows up in one scene in the first third, and then he comes back for the ending. Right. Yeah. And his yes. his whole thing, he's in two scenes. Has to well, I guess technically three. Um he he's like talking on the phone with the ladies and Pan's like very smooth and he's like, Shut up. And then the lady on the phone's like, What? You tell me to shut up? And he's like, No, I was talking to my niece. Ha ha ha. Yeah. 
today. Uh, yeah, no, you you nailed it. No, that that that's Goten. Yep. Okay. Did he have a character? He didn't really have a character before. Even I in Super, I, I can't. I, I mean, he's just a cheerful kid. Yep. Like, there's not much more to him, so. Deep. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really be upset at it. I don't. I feel like I want more to be there, but he's just going to leave. Like, they, they just it's, left. Only, it's almost like, okay. If only Goten could just be like, like when you select him. <laughs> if he just said something like, I came back in time six years with a time machine to stop the future from happening because I come from the bad one. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but no, Goten's like, I'm a kid. And and now he's like, I'm a teenager. I get, this is more of like, because Trunks always had a personality. Trunks has a more thorough personality than Goten. Yeah. Because Goten's just Goku minus all life experiences. <laughs> Fair. Uh, but Bob, were you going to say anything? Or? They, we know from the intro and everything that it's, it's going to be uh, Trunks, Goten, or sorry, Trunks, Goku, and Pan going around the galaxy. <laughs> Which made me spend most of this episode being disappointed that them rounding up all these Saiyans and shoving them into ship wasn't going to happen. Because right. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, yes. Six fucking Saiyans, one Goku. How, how did Gohan get out of doing it? Like, they just, he, it was originally, like, they he said. He was outside of the ship. Yeah, but. He it, was going to do it. It wasn't because of the plan, because the plan was throwing Trunks and Goten in there. Instead. No, 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 they were joining two. No, it was, they said that the ship can only hold three people. It was going to be Goku, Goten, Trunks. Like, that's, they said that? They yeah, said it only holds three they people. They said it, they were very specific about it only holds three people. We can, can't. It doesn't even make any sense, though. I they know, didn't... right? But it's still. It's like, we need Hail Zeon to watch this through subtitled. No, I think, but you don't if, think if, the dub team yeah, fucking if they, if they screwed it up that bad, dude. Over nine thousand, yeah, is a true. thing. If the if the plan was to just shove them all in there, <laughs> oh my god, that would have been a much better series. But the at ship, the same time, the ship can only hold a thousand and three people <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> if that was well, the, it was only off by a thousand, and given our track record, that's par for the course. This ship is going to have to launch and relaunch constantly for all these different planets. Wait, why don't one, they... one moment, Xeon, I know that wasn't Funimation. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's Osha Group. Do not fucking leave that comment. <laughs> Just stop right there. Stop typing, you motherfucker. Listen. <laughs> but why don't they just turn around and get the people they actually wanted and not just keep going as Pan? Like, I don't... Maybe they'll... Exp the, this is something we'll have to wait till next episode to see if they explain. Because they said the secret password Piccolo into it. <laughs> and then it took off into space. <laughs> they just can't control it now. Except for this time they just said, Ah, uh, I don't know, Black Star Dragon Balls? And then it flew <laughs> off into... It's basically Siri. <laughs> she held the Siri button and then said, Take off. Mm -hmm. That's all it heard. It didn't hear the rest of her sentence. It didn't hear anything else. Because it's Siri. Because Apple Core or Capsule Core is Apple. But yeah, I don't. I didn't really care for the um the the kidnapping plot that much. Like I feel like mm -hmm. the the only good parts of it were when they called in for to like try and ransom him. Yeah, the them just being kind of bumbling buffoons around that. I didn't really like. I it, it was trying to be funny, but mm -hmm. I didn't find it funny at all. Like, I feel like that was pretty weak. Hmm. You're wrong, but continue. Uh, I, I see. <laughs> no, it was fucking comedy gold. It was like Home Alone. It was, Do you not like Home Alone? It was so... Are you soulless? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was you really... You didn't like the part... <laughs> it was really... You didn't like the part where Goku put those marbles on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. I can prove it. No, you can't. <laughs> it's an audio-only <laughs> podcast. You can't prove anything in audio. There's no, I can say anything. There were no and get paint away buckets, Dad. No paint buckets. Yeah, there were. They were capsule <laughs> paint buckets. And the logo looked like shit. <laughs> now they know what I'm saying is real because I've given them a small detail. <laughs> Gives them confidence that I would do. Wouldn't just make up it being home alone. Uh huh. Um. 
Yeah, but it, it never hung out on those areas long enough for it to become a, a large problem. It was just, uh, it, I feel like I feel like my major disappointment with the episode, you know, the thing that brings it from a 10 out of 10 to a 9.9 .9 out of 10 <laughs> is when Trunks, Trunks doesn't develop more. I'm a little disappointed on that. Hopefully in future episodes we develop more on him because we got like two scenes with him. You got two he, scenes where he did the same thing. Right. And that was it. Like right. that, that's and he all just we get gets for him. shot off in his face. It's, and I'm like, well, we got a lot to develop in these next few episodes. It's too bad Goten didn't also get this treatment <laughs> because he's just going to be horn dog for the rest of the series. And bro, like we see her for a frame, basically. Yeah, yeah like, she's I was a single angle. In freaking Tail Zeon wrote it and said she was nine, and like that didn't look she like they didn't do a nine look year nine old. nine at all. I, that's why I'm entertaining. Is bull someone else entirely? That doesn't make sense. Right? It's like, this, oh, yeah, this is uh, their foster child this who looks just like Bulma. This is my incredibly, <laughs> incredibly gorgeous nine year old daughter. <laughs> she works part time at the McDonald's. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you genetically engineering your children? What? We would never. You should maybe not do that. As it turns out, God kind of gets pissed. And God in this universe is a dumb asshole who makes puns all day. What I'm trying to say is Firehawk is God in the Dragon Ball universe. <laughs> Did we? Yeah, we didn't go back to Hankai at all in this episode. He just no. came in at the end of the last episode to be like, Goku, it's going to blow up. And, and then, and then he's it. like, yeah, I know, right? You, you <sighs> feel cares? like Mr. Popo would have said something, but that guy just went, oh. Yeah, it's almost like Mr. Popo didn't know. We got it's to, almost like nobody knew what these to, freaking Dragon Balls were. We got to re-experience Goku <laughs> saying, I didn't see the dragon when I walked in. <laughs> yes. On an open patio where the entire... Okay. All right. Goku's nearsighted. Just, just keep going. Cripplingly nearsighted. You'd think he'd have to have like some insanely great vision to do a, to keep up with all the fighting he it's does. He's doing it by feel. He's I doing guess, it by touch. I guess. But I thought that yeah. he didn't learn that until he went all Blanco or whatever. <laughs> I don't know, I'm following the Right, show. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, that, that episode of GT, I feel, is much better than the last one. I feel like I would want to watch a show that keeps this up, but I'm really concerned Yeah. that it's just gonna it's just gonna dive to be almost as bad as Super. <laughs> almost. <sighs> and I, I, I just, I, I look forward to learning more about Trunks, because holy shit, they did not develop him this episode. They're like, look at him. He's such a fucking Chad walking around his own fucking building having like 30 women who are slightly older than him hit on him. Isn't that cool? He's so good at his job. But he blushes the whole time. He's, he's like, Ugu. Well, I mean, yeah, it is like 30 it's, fucking right, it women. Is, it is a lot. That's a lot. Take in. So even for a Chad, that's <laughs> the weight is so much. And then Pan's only development was she's upset that she's a kid. No, she's not upset she's well, a kid. She's, she's upset, upset that, that no people one don't her. take her seriously. Right. Which is understandable. People are pieces of shit to kids and condescend to them nonstop. Right. Because as it turns out, most people are stupid. And they assume all kids are stupid like they are currently. <laughs> Welcome to IQ distribution in the United States. It's depressing. Now then. I hey, guess. Hey, Bob. Hey. I, I think we got to talk about that other show. Yeah, you know, Dragon Ball Super, fucking garbage one. Bob, do you want to sum? I mean, I took summarization notes. I guess if you want to go, but you, go ahead you and summarize. Did, you seem I mean, to critique not only GT but my summarization notes last time. So I maybe. Don't, I mean, I can, I can, I can give it a shot. I mean, and you can bring up what I miss. Here's my notes. This episode sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I think this episode this episode starts amazing. The title is literally like Vegeta goes on a family vacation. Yes, no, I was pretty hyped for this episode that, coming in. That was that's amazing. Yes. Then it immediately cuts to King Kai's planet. Yes. King Kai is driving around his little car on that one street. On the one street. Yeah. It's amazing. He's telling puns while he does it. Like and that he, is And then he gets upset when they didn't enjoy it. Right. And explains to them that the cores of the fighting principles that he taught should have told them that puns are the highest form of entertainment and they need to fucking appreciate them. Yeah. It was it was like peak King Kai. That was amazing. That, 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 was, that probably is the best King Kai's ever been written. Right. That was just... 
blowing it out of the water right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, amazing. Then Goku just appears there because he's going there to train. Because it's transmission, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he's going there to train. And he appears in the middle of the road, and King Kai freaks out, and he crashes into a tree. He crashes into Into his house. house. Yeah, Yeah. he destroys his house. Given the trajectory of where he actually veered off, I thought it was a tree, and then (laughs) they were like, it was the house. And I'm like, but wasn't... Look, he ruined his house, (laughs) so he had something to do. It's a small spherical planet. Right. It's really easy to <laughs> keep veering and eventually end up at that thing that was behind you when you started. Right. It is. I get that. He was going a little too slow for that, but I get it. Look. But yeah, he fucks up his house, and then Goku just points out, hey, couldn't you instantly repair your house instead of using this hammer and bitching me out? And he's like, yeah, but then I wouldn't be able to bitch you out. Yeah, no, it's great. It's amazing. And and then, you know. And then he complains about Goku's farmer outfit and he changes this to some sweatpants thing. And yeah, it's, he changes it's hilarious. It to like an athletic, like an a- athlete's outfit. It's real right. weird. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's amazing. It's like it's... Goku is wearing <laughs> topical exercising clothes. Right? I liked it. Did, he, did King Kai create that or do you think he just instant transmitted back to Earth to get it? Either way, it works. I mean. Okay. Maybe he could even instant transmission to, to Piccolo and be like, hey, I need some, some modern stuff. Zeon, I got your back. So here's the problem with this. Okay. Goku but, went to King Kai's planet to train because yes. he said, it's 10 times gravity and I can't think of anywhere else ever to train better. Look, he, the only thing they found better than that was the, the, the gravity multiplier that Bulma makes, but he's not going to step on Vegeta's territory. He can't Do you think go Goku with... is working out the social merits of stepping on Vegeta's toes? Yeah. He's like, no, oh, jeez. He... I might really upset Vegeta's Look, this feelings. is adult Goku. This isn't kid Goku. So is... Adult Goku expect... understands, hey, I can't just go hang out at Vegeta's place all day. He's going to just be upset. I think he's going to kick me out. I think Bob is talking about me. <laughs> and he's pretending we're doing a podcast right now. And I really don't appreciate it. But I'm going to ignore that and truck on through this podcast. <laughs> Bob, don't pay attention to anything I just said. Now then, Bob, you're expecting an emotionally mature Goku for the rest of the series who takes into account other people's sense of uh, dominion and whether or not they, he stepped on their toes. Only that's Vegeta. A, that's a mark. Only Vegeta. That's a mark you're going to hold the series to. I'm going to I'm going to hope that Goku's going to emotionally understand Vegeta. Yes, at some level. And he's it, not going to do least- anything. Hey, look, he'll, he'll do a few things. He's not gonna. So, it's not like he's gonna. So, Bob, having said that, uh huh, did he fucking tell King Kai I don't want to upset Vegeta because I could have sworn he didn't fucking say that. He just went. I literally can't think of anything better because if I did, then this episode wouldn't work. Well, he's. We've never even seen Goku actually ha- use those facilities over in Capital Corp. Maybe he doesn't even know what they have. He, them. he trained on the ship, dude. He trained on the ship. That's it. He's like. They don't have this technology. No. I'm not even going to ask. That, that's in I'm space. I'm not even going to ask Dr. That was a Debris. spaceship. That was a spaceship that came from Earth. That was a spaceship in the middle of space. That's why he was like, yeah, of course they can adjust gravity. Look, Goku doesn't think things through that well. Bob is, Bob is doing a really great job of drastically overselling and underselling <laughs> Goku just to maintain his point. <laughs> Kids, if you're in debate club, pay attention. These are some good tips. <laughs> Trump is a fucking genius, but also a stooge. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> it's like, isn't that like the conspiracy theory? <laughs> Think of like the government's so incredibly capable that they masterminded all of this and then they fucked it up at the last second because of, <laughs> yes. they were anywhere near as capable as I keep insisting that none of this would have happened. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's smart. Okay. Loose change on Goku. Look, <laughs> Goku understands people or Vegeta emotionally, but also has no idea what the heck is going on over there. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's like, why do kids keep coming out of there? <laughs> Go- Goku, you know, you know how that you have kid. Never mind. Um. So yeah, Vegeta. Vegeta passed all that dumb bullshit. Yes. Vegeta actually goes on a family trip. It's great. It's pretty good. And then uh, they did a they're, cool they're scene. flying a ship there. Yeah. And, you know, Trunks and Bulma are inside. And then she's like, he's like, you're not going fast enough. And Bulma goes, yeah, well, your dad, blah, 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 blah. And 
turns out Vegeta's just standing on top of the ship because he's so cool. It was he's pretty like, cool. He's like, why don't you speed this up? And then she's like, you want to go fast? And it's like a, a couple argument, you know? A little bit. Where they're like yeah. angry-ish at each other, but not like furious. Mm-hmm. Where he just says a shitty thing and then she counters by doing a shitty thing. And so she starts like going hella fast, flying through clouds, diving into the ocean, and then flying through a shitload of trees. And Vegeta just stands there, not even closing his eyes. His eyes are so powerful, they don't get branches. Did and, you did you not see the, the suit? Oh yeah, you didn't watch the Superman movie with Man of Steel where no, he, I didn't. Ta- he talks he takes a bullet to the pu- or to the eyeball and it bounces off. That's basically what what oh, saying. I thought like. it was going to be a thing like the second Matrix film where <laughs> Neo was flying so fast that all the cars and shit flew with him. <laughs> that was going to be one of those, but uh, there was probably that was a more. Because the rest of the movie is kind of messy. Why like are that we one scene. reviewing the Matrix films? I feel like those are maybe a little bit put together <laughs> better than. <laughs> Whatever. In any case, uh, and then after that, Vegeta's like, Pleh. and he has like fruit hanging out of his hair because it ripped off the branches of the. Yeah. Right. That's pretty was, good. And yeah. then they arrive at the tropical location where they're going on vacation and they're hanging out and being a family. And it's like a slideshow at first. They just have still frames that they're dubbing over because <laughs> they spent a lot of money on the tree thing. Look, the, the, driving through the trees is expensive, okay? Yeah. So here's your still frame. We're just gonna dub over these pictures, and they they actually do a flashback to a uh, Z. They do. And, I, I like, and, and Vegeta explains that his, the reason he was okay with this trip is because he uh, he told Trunks if he could land a punch on him, mm-hmm. he would take him to a theme park. Right. And then and then he landed a punch on him, so Vegeta decked him right in the goddamn face, and did not take him to a theme park. <laughs> Because Vegeta's this sort of piece of shit dad who murders this hair, it starts growing a mustache. <laughs> yes. But that's an alternate timeline that's no longer canon. We don't need to worry about that. I'm just saying Z, Z's one true timeline goes into GT. <laughs> first come, first serve. <laughs> Let's talk about... Did Sonya Belmont sire... <laughs> Sire Gabriel? <laughs> Is that how Lords of Shadow fits in? Sure. You know I what? Mean, Let's not bring up Lords of Shadow on Dragon Ball Z. Podcast. Right, no, we're putting, it's we're putting people to sleep. They don't fucking care about anything but Dragon Ball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that was a weird transition, though, from dubbed over slideshow into, oh, it's animating again. <laughs> right, a little bit. Yeah, because they even have a slideshow scene. Like, it's another one of the slides, but then Trunks comes out of the fitting room that's in the shot. Right. It's like, oh, but you didn't animate them talking just then. Look, it's I don't, really I don't, it, I don't expect the much animation-wise, okay? Yeah, you but you, you expect can't. any no, animation-wise. You don't expect really. frames. Yeah, I do. You you came into this expecting a slideshow the entire episode? I expect it for anything that's not action heavy. Like anything. To have no frames. No frames. Not even two. Not even two. Just a frame. Maybe you haven't watched a Toei series. <laughs> I pride myself on having not watched anything remotely recent from Toei. Yeah, no, I I mean I've seen just one <sighs> piece much. even even ten years ago or whatever they were doing this. Yeah. Well, uh, so then we just get a bunch of fun scenes. Like, yeah. oh, they're hungry, and so they're going to eat, and Vegeta's eating, and it's zany, and he's loving it, and they both love food, Trunks and Vegeta, and Bulma's like, I knew that would cheer him up. And then they're eating a giant octopus, and and then the octopus sprays Vegeta with ink, and he starts freaking out and getting so pissed that he starts shattering windows, and then they're like, we should go. And they sort of just wheel him out, kind of, almost. Yeah, like her, her, they like tilt him just, and, yeah. and just take him off. And then they're at some luau thing, and people keep bumping into Vegeta. He gets real mad, and he shouts super loud, and then he flies off. And then Trunks and Bulma are like, oh, he left. And Bulma's like, oh, I'm surprised you made it this long. And Trunks goes... See you later, Dad. Thanks for coming. It was great. It was nice knowing you. This will emotionally scar me for years. <laughs> but this is like, this is good for Vegeta. Like, this is, we're seeing that this yes. is like. <laughs> he normally gets an eye for attendance. You know, he fails because he doesn't even show up to class enough. Right. But this time but he got a D minus. We're starting to see, like, him break his shell a little bit and maybe start to be a dad or something. No. No, he did this because he he's a man of his word. 
I even guess. though it clearly took years. Well, that was and, only like months ago because that was them training before Boo. Like that's literally happens in the in the. Okay, so you're saying months ago Z occurred? Yes, because okay. because in the last episode they said four months ago. Zion. I'm not going to, whatever this, whatever <laughs> else happens, that hasn't happened yet. I'm okay. sure that that'll happen eventually. That future timeline can change, Zion, so don't even say anything yet. You're not allowed. Bob has disallowed you from telling us what is going to happen in as much as this doesn't fit in a timeline. <laughs> you know, GT fit in a timeline with Z just fine. <laughs> <laughs> a timeline that hardly exists. What are you talking about? It goes Z... Z's ending events, and then GT picks up years later. Yeah, Whereas like, this oh, is like, it's a few months later. Eh, or years. I mean, like I said, we haven't seen it yet. We don't okay. know. We okay. don't know how bad that is. Super's going to be flawless. It'll be fine. It'll They'll be, do it fine. It'll be fine. I, l I wrote down the note, uh, the, what Vegeta said when the, the octopus sprayed him. He said, you impudent tentacled bastard. And I was like, this is pretty good. I like that. That's that's yeah. A, that's a good Vegeta line. Yeah, yeah. They they did some pretty that's, decent that's stuff some there. That's good rage. And then uh, after he leaves, uh, we cut to Beers in space. Yes, and Beers is like hanging out on this planet. He's like he has having some weird dream that he can't quite make out. No, he's remembering his dream from when he was asleep. Yeah, okay. He wasn't having the dream. Right, right. He was just remembering. He's like vaguely re recollecting it. And uh, Whis is off getting him food. Mm -hmm. So Whis travels to a planet that's zany, has giant dinos that breathe fire like dragons, but are drawn goofy so they aren't just dinosaur dragons. And then there are a bunch of cavemen who aren't men. They're tiny aliens, so yeah, it's really goofy. Tentacle cavemen or and something. Then, and then they throw like their uh, little stone axes at it, and it does nothing. And then it starts literally roasting all of them. And then some super caveman dude who looks like a different species sort of like flies in and wrecks the dragon and yeah. And then they all, all the tiny little alien cavemen start carrying away the dragon and they're going to go eat it. And then we shows up and he's like, hey, give me this dragon. And then the alien caveman's like, blah, 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 ho, 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 ho. It was like, it was dog of wisdom. Right. And then, and then, and then we is like, fine. And then he does the thing with his staff, and then he can talk in the same language as the alien caveman. So then he goes, ho, 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 And then the other guy's like, ha, 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 <laughs> And this is like 10 seconds of this fucking show. Yeah. Yeah, this, this part, we, we, it did feel like GT. Like, it, it felt like something I expect from GT. Oh, yeah, no, like the whole <laughs> segment. That whole bit, yeah, right. The whole thing, right. That the was whole, very like, GT. That's weirdo. definitely what I expected from GT. Just some weird, like, outer space adventure where you see these zany worlds. Mm -hmm. Instead, here it is at the beginning of Super, and Beer shows up and he's like, and "GT ain't even in space yet. It's doing GT better than GT." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Vegeta ain't got no mustache. <laughs> That's pretty GT, if it, you ask me. It's true. It is. It is not doing GT. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you God. You can't even cop to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... <sighs> Beer shows up and he's like, you took too long getting my food, Weiss. And then Weiss is like, I had 20 more seconds. And he's like, yeah, whatever. It was like forever, man. And then the alien caveman's like, rawr, and attacks him. And then Beer says, really cool. And he stops all the punches with one finger. He catches a fireball. The thing shoots at him. He reverses it and slams it into the dude. And he gets launched into the ground and... That's the end of that. Yeah, and then Beerus just... is like, I was hoping this meat from this dragon would help me remember my memory. My dream I had. I had a vision. Mm -hmm. It's a vision. And yeah. then and then he got pissed. Actually, no. He just blew up the planet. Yeah, they just he blew didn't up really the planet get pissed. for no, no, really, no real reason. He's... With the dragon. He didn't even eat the dragon. Yeah, he, he, he just blew up the entire thing, and then he's like staring at this explosion and doing this mild dose of LSD. <laughs> I have remembered, I've unlocked the secrets of my mind and remembered what the dream was of. It's of a super sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> or super Saiyan. Yes. It would have been pretty good if they said that line. But right. Then, but yeah, then no. that would have been, someone would have been like, You stole that, that from Butler GT, you, didn't you? You, you, stole, you, <laughs> you stole that from Butler GT, who probably got it stolen from TVC Bridge at some point. <laughs> Man, none of these people even fucking know what Butler GT is. <laughs> right. 
I imagine if Mr. Fields listening, he's like, I do. <laughs> but, Probably. But, you know. That guy apparently looks up all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> no, he just read web comics. Right? Okay. A lot, I'm guessing. <laughs> Maybe not too much, but enough to know the darker regions of the of the fan lore of GBZ. Uh, I hope not. That poor creature. I, I pray that he doesn't have that problem. <laughs> so then they're like, mm, yes, we should find this Super Saiyan. And Super then, Saiyan God. Super Saiyan God. Sorry. Yeah, he, he saw Super he, Saiyan God like, and there's an explosion like, the He's like, a planet. Super Saiyan God will keep me from getting bored. Let's find one of those. And then they just, whoosh, and Whis, like, turns them into the thing from, like, I don't know, that one anime that Excel Saga was parodying in the third episode. That was a military episode where there's a giant thing flying through space. There's a Poochu's. It was a Poochu ship. It was a giant whirl. It was a giant, like, pinwheel in space of energy. Oh, that. Before it got Man. stopped. Yeah, no. I don't think that anyone's going to understand that description. <laughs> I guess that just means I'm too much of an Ochi Otaku for you. <laughs> That's why they call me Anime to Anime. Uh-huh. So then after that, Vegeta trains in the exact gravity chamber I was thinking of the entire fucking episode. Right. At 150 Gs. Because he knows about that gravity chamber. Yeah. Goku doesn't even know what gravity is. <laughs> right? Maybe. Right. Okay. So No, he he gets it. He just doesn't know that thing is this. He's, he's like, I, I want I want battle routines one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they keep going. Uh-huh. And it's like ten minutes as he just lists off a bunch of numbers. And, <laughs> and he just fires lasers at him while he <laughs> while he's like grunting in the middle of his room. <laughs> he's like, Oh yes. <laughs> I'm so strong and he starts whipping himself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's Vegeta in a nutshell. Um because he he doesn't want to be number two. Right. And yeah, he, he wants to be Super King Big Dick. Of course. That's how, that's just how he is. Yeah. And uh yeah. So he's gonna train really hard at 150 G's. He's not gonna let Goku train and him not train. And they're going to get really strong, because Majin Buu was real strong, and Goku was stronger than Majin Buu, which means he's stronger than Vegeta. That was Vegeta's logic, even though Goku beat Majin Buu with a lot of borrowed energy. Yeah, I was like, didn't we he won't beat, talk about that. Goku's with, ability with to the, get loans for... from the bank <laughs> should play into how strong of a warrior he is. That makes I, I, total it, sense. It's been a while since I watched it. We need to go back and watch that end of Soup, or Z at some yes, point. Yes, in between see... this episode and next episode, we're going to watch the end of Z, because... Bob wouldn't stop fucking saying things and questioning things and saying <laughs> saying statements that I don't think he can back up. Right. So we gotta fact check his fucking ass with the end of Z that Zeon lent us. Because we can't trust Zeon either. <laughs> you I, trust Zeon, that's when you start saying, yeah, the, the Mobile Suit Gundam movies is a great way to experience that fucking story. <laughs> that's, that's why you don't trust Zeon as storytelling. You know what you trust Zeon on? Shit you would trust a wiki page on. <laughs> That's but, why you trust Zeon on. Yeah, I really want to see the end of it because I feel like that the we keep hearing about this other time skip that happened at the end of Z. I feel like that's going to be wholly ignored. Like I, I feel like anything that happens in there and is completely non-canon, kind of like GT. Uh, okay, so that's that's, o- what, that's okay. That's what I that's, I figure wait, what, what kind of like GT. Do. What do you mean, kind of like GT? Well, kind of non-canonical, canonical oh, like okay. GT. Okay, so it's okay that Super threw away the thing that came after it and the thing that came before it, except for the parts it wanted. Yeah. To make a story. Uh-huh. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Look. How many more if, times do if, we get to blow up the moon in Super, you think? I don't care. I'm like hoping three like times. three more times. Right? If, if Dan, if it means I can get an actual good Naruto series. A good they wanna, Naruto series? If they want to completely forget anything they did in Boruto, then go for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, that's that's the problem with all of those, right? You want to capture that uh, lightning in a bottle again, right? And um, I, I haven't watched a lot of work, though, so I really can't say much about that. But say if they want to do like want to try, mean, it try again for, bleach. it works for like, all of these. It even works yeah. for fucking Harry Potter. Yeah, but, but cut out the stuff you don't want. Cut out or excise the parts that are going to trouble your lore. So, I couldn't be more different from Bob. You know the best Planet of the Apes film? Planet of the Apes 2. Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Why? It takes place seconds after the first film. And that is exactly See, what I the, need in my fiction. And that's what they want. That's that's, what, that's that's bravery. That's what DBZ wanted. Or that's what Dragon Ball Super wants. But it couldn't do it. Like, there's too much other junk that they threw in. So, they, they went like five minutes after Z ended. False. False. Yeah? They could have easily been like, Good job, Oob. 
No. They could have picked up from there. They could not have. Why? Then everyone, like... Because they, they already wrote that series. <laughs> they they did already do it once, so it'd be weird going back and doing that same exact place again. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that... Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Lost track? Oh, oh, lost track a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... Doing Frustrated? This, doing this at 4 a.m. isn't helping me right now. It's um, helping me. <laughs> but, yeah, do, going back and doing that, having to make up for, like, what every other person was doing between those events. Yeah. That just causes a lot of, like, unknowns. And put that slow what Super is doing. Not, Super is covering, like, what happened to everybody since blank. Like, Not, it, it's it's having to compensate for the amount of time between it and the last piece of fiction it's willing to commit to. But that's only, like, four months, so there's not a lot of change in these characters. Like, these characters are kind of where we left them off. I'm not going to say shit, because I will eat fucking crow, and you will too, uh -huh. next episode, when we fucking watch that shit, and it makes no sense. <laughs> and I do not want that immortalized on the internet. Okay. Because, quite frankly... I watched the fucking conclusion to Z 12 goddamn years ago. Yeah, that's... 13 years ago. You think I fucking remember? You know what I remember? I resume. Eh. I remember stuff. Yeah, what do you... Let's talk about what you remember that you're so committed to. <laughs> that That isn't canon, I, I basically probably. remember the freaking when they kill boo with the giant sphere bomb and then everything's fine but but no that's not there's a whole a and, fucking episode and then after the, that then there's like, a whole fucking episode in a half this time that. jump where it's like here's mini goku and mini vegeta fighting it's like who cares <laughs> pop's like this is dog shit i'm gonna pretend it's not real <laughs> and thus Pop's i feel like that's what they're cutting that out entirely with gt too it's just like who cares like why we jump 30 years in the future <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, the jump 30 years. <laughs> well, Bob, that, that time jump was the end of GT. <laughs> GT's gonna if it leads right GT's... Into, if GT leads into that, I GT. will just stand and applaud. It will be the most amazing series ever. GT's gonna end GT's gonna end with them finding the white star dragon balls. <laughs> People are doing gonna be everything like, they did I, in black with those two. No, no. people are gonna be like, I hope nobody turns this Vegeta asshole into a really small kid. <laughs> <laughs> it is gonna happen in the five minutes that could possibly happen. Yep. They go to the world tournament with yep. the Moses kids, and then they turn around and like fight baby or whatever's going on in the uh -huh. real live line. Oh no, that that already happened. <laughs> they resolved every time. Every plot line. And then they found the White Star Dragon Balls and Pilaf said some dumb shit again. Oh, man. Look, you gotta write, you gotta write your Dragon Ball like you write your Star Wars prequels. Not at all. You put, you put every last fucking pencil in the exact spot it was in in time for episode four. God damn it, the Star Wars prequels are bad. Yes. <laughs> like I feel it like to line up perfect. <laughs> it's just bullshit that Toriyama gets even the slightest slack because <laughs> his shit's usually not as bad as the Star Wars prequels. Like I don't think that's fair to writers worldwide. They all get a pass, right? Nobody's as bad as Lucas. Jesus, oh, man, fucking. I mean, just the amount of every pencil needs to be the exact spot it was in in Episode Four, even though that ends what seventeen years. Yeah. 19 years before the events of episode four. How old is Luke in right. episode four? Episode four? He's like, oh man. Is he, I, I think he's actually he's, like he's early like, 20s. Yeah, but he might, yeah. they, they so might be like, trying to pull him off at 18 like, or something, like but still. 18 that's, to 20 years. Right? It's like 20 years. <laughs> Why would everything like, go It's almost like the last scene in episode three is him putting a number two pencil <laughs> in a cup. And then the first scene in episode four is like Uncle Ben picking up that pencil out of that cup. Mm hmm. Oh, I was there. <laughs> That's that pencil. <laughs> There's our two. Uncle Ben spent 20 years straight in a desert moping. <laughs> yeah, doing nothing. Oh, man. Well, um, <sighs> but nobody found him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even though it's the planet that Darth Vader grew up on. <laughs> uh -huh. 
He would never think to check there. He would never check with his extended family. In fact, let's let's wonder why Kenobi wanted to stay there in the first place. That seems like a really random goddamn thing. I guess there was the thing about, like, I'm going to leave this kid with his relatives. With his relatives, which should be really easy for Anakin to find. But whatever. 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 This is not Dragon Ball. So between this episode two of Super, episode two of um, Kai, sorry, fuck, episode two to Super, episode two of GT, and episode two of Star Wars. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's the worst? The Star Wars, jeez. <laughs> episode two of Star Wars is one of the worst episodes ever. I seriously have to fight falling asleep during those movies. <laughs> yes. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Okay, oh so with God, that... that's the one that starts with the changelet assassin that tries to assassinate using freaking uh, yeah. whatever. And then he hops between the cars. Yeah, he hops. Between... He skydives through the vertically. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. It was the coolest. It's so cool. Um, but with that out of the way, uh huh. Which which did you like more, that episode of GT or that episode of Super? I liked the Super more. Yeah. Okay. Like, why? I really liked the stuff they did with the. The early part of the vacation where he's on top of the plane, I thought that was actually really good. That made me mm-hmm. laugh a few times because it was just just how ridiculous it, it got. Yeah. And I really liked the King Kai part. I know that was only a very minimal part, but that was really good King Kai. Mm. Like that didn't... I felt like we haven't seen King Kai in that, that high of fidelity since the, when they first introduced him. Yeah. Um... And I didn't, I didn't really have moments like that in GT where I thought they were that good. Like, I feel like the Hercule stuff was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, seeing some of that, him seeing interacting him, with his granddaughter, I yeah. thought that was actually really the best part of that episode. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. And then they just sort of, like, just hurriedly wrap everything up and jump in the spaceship because they have to. Mm. Mm. Uh-huh. Are you done lying, or...? <laughs> Yes, that's it. Okay, I, okay. I rest my case. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be a tie. Yeah? Yes. Because while there are some funny and neat moments in Super, mm-hmm. and maybe there are a few more funny moments in Super, I do really like the lore of GT. Like, and how many, how many things it needs to build out because it's such a large time gap. I mean, only one of these two episodes had trunks as a motherfucking chad just walking around being like every 20 to 30 year old woman in this building that's, wants to bone me that's only because we didn't see any trunks in, in super I'm, i mean i'm sure that they'd all be over him we didn't see trunks in super not in this episode who was bulma with <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> I'm way too tired to be doing this. Yeah, or Trunks. exactly tired enough to be watching fucking Dragon Ball. Yeah, you know, you're right. Trunks was there. He the, was the not were a not, Chad. We're not spooning over him. It, it's terrible. By the, his age, <laughs> I had way his more. Right age of like I don't know, thirty five, whatever the seven, whatever it hails you on says the time skip really was. <laughs> they say it's four months, but it's actually sixty seven years. <laughs> See. Oh, man, Saiyans is, being a fri- fighting race, evolving to be a fighting race. Is this race. like the Bayonetta 2 timeline? <laughs> brilliant? <laughs> yes, brilliant. <laughs> That's what Super is. Uh, but no, like, I, I, I kind of seriously, like, uh, I, I do really like how all the characters need to have, like, a thing they're doing. You do get the same amount of balancing a bunch of different characters in GT that you do in the first two episodes of Super, you know? Uh-huh. Whereas your first episode of GT really focused on like four people and then threw a bunch of it at the last second. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was weird. So um, I do like how the next episode does a little bit better job balancing everything. Um, I also did find parts of it funny. Um, and uh, you know, as I talk about this, I realize there's a lot to really enjoy about GT. So I'm going to give it to GT because of Vegeta's mustache. <laughs> And the fact that he just flew up to Trunks, who he knew was pulling this Looney Tunes bullshit of changing in the clouds and sneaking out of his office. And he's like, look, there are two ways. The easy way or the one where I drag you. And, then, you know. Yeah, that, that part was all right. And then we cut to him literally dragging him down a hallway. And it was like, that's pretty good. So, yeah, I'm going to have to give it to GT, you know. 
<laughs> Super, uh, at no point did GT become a slideshow. That was dubbed over. So there's a point for that. Okay. Um, at no point did Super have a mustache. I didn't see Vegeta Whatever. having a mustache. GT didn't cut back to Super or Dragon Ball Z footage. That's all I need. Oh, we, you need recycled footage. Yes, yes, we need to basically all of all of Bob's Super. ready for you to throw away everything possible to do that flashback. <laughs> That's what Bob's incredibly complex needs of your follow up is. <laughs> throw that shit in the trash. Unless you want to do a flashback, then keep that one clip. Look, that part was important. Throw the rest in the trash. That was during the, the, the train from Majin Buu. It was <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Good. You're sure of that? No. You better be sure, because Zeon, Zeon <laughs> is Zeon, sure. Zeon, Zeon's going. Zeon's like a Terminator for right. stupid bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Instead of be like, being like, it's, it was actually for the tournament they were having. Instead or, of showing up at hotels and being like, are you Sarah Connor? He's just like, this isn't from that clip. <laughs> and then he's like, gonna, he's gonna walk through your wall, you know, like Kenshiro style. We still haven't had any Super Saiyans in GT yet. What's up with that? We haven't had any Super Saiyan twos. <laughs> <laughs> it's super. We have we... GT understands that you can't just start at sixty miles per hour. You gotta you gotta bring up your engine. It's a slow burn. Yeah, they want to do a slow burn series. It's not about every episode having a major action scene, which is dog shit. Which Super is really about. Yeah, I know this. Uh... Oh, here's the fish thing. Oh, here's Beers fighting some random asshole. <laughs> Even though it's a completely one-sided fight. Yes. We need to establish how absurdly powerful Beers is. They did that when he blew up half of a planet by tapping a kitchen I know. table. I know. I can't defend this this Beers thing. We, I, The whole point of flashing to him at all was to have the, the, strike, the super Saiyan God well, not only, not only, Well, in episode two, yeah. Yeah, that in was episode a, two. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, they establish his power by having him do those small things that aren't a struggle at all. In fact, you have to sit here and wonder why he has any patience for the caveman alien to even put up with the fight they had. Yeah, I don't. It's just dumb. Yeah. It's fine, though. But, but see, like the caveman segment was like the bad stuff I was expecting from GT. It wasn't like the fun, interesting stuff. It was like, what if caveman's butt in space? Which is what we were kidding about. We were kidding about GT becoming sliders. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just have to... Because GT's only getting to space now. And and we'll see how, you know, how fast they evolve into that. I don't that. know a lot about the future of Super, but I do know there's a universe thing where, like, oh, this person comes from the such-and-such such universe. So Super is literally going to become sliders. Yes, I guess. But I, I hopefully the other But it universe... won't be bold enough to be like, what if Goku was Russian? <laughs> just... <laughs> What I need out of my sliders, I don't know about you. Right? You gotta reuse the same cast members, just with slightly different co hair colors. <laughs> we recast the main guy as a completely <laughs> different guy and pretended. Who knows? With the way Shovel's going, maybe they will have to do that. Thanks for listening to this episode of GT vs. Super. I hope we all learned a lot today. If you enjoyed this, you should probably subscribe and comment below saying exactly, quote, I enjoyed this. That's the only way we'll know if you enjoyed this. And after you do those, maybe maybe back us on Patreon and, uh, I don't know, spam us with comments. Be like, I'm only backing you for your dumb Dragon Ball podcast. That, that helps us figure out why people like us. And uh, it's really helpful because, as it turns out, if the podcast doesn't get any views and we don't get any support, uh, eventually we have to stop it because we only have a limited amount of time. But I'm really getting off topic. What I'm here to say is thank you. has been brought to you by our magnificent God King executive producers. Vince Bover, Cywolf, Nicholas Cameron, Peter Meekum, E. Lee Broyles, Unit Number 2, Joshua Mattingly, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Trouncing Trogdor, and Spaceman Spiff. Thank you to all of our magnificent God King executive producers. And also these guys. 
head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today and become one of these names.